Dave McMenamin, ESPN NBA reporter in attendance for Victor Wambayama's Summer League Games. Kind enough to join us. Dave, give me the uh, atmosphere of those two games, and is there anything comparable with Victor Wambayama's debuts? Well, Friday was off the charts. Uh, I would say two, three hours before tip-off, you had Thomas and Mack Center which is on UNLV's campus, was already about 90% full. Uh, and it ended up being this excellent crowd for Jabari Smith Jr. and the Houston Rockets to pull off uh, a last-second win against the Portland Trailblazers. Um, uh, you know, you had – I was talking to Brent Barry, who, you know, you guys remember Brent was a dunk contest champion, a longtime NBA player. He works for the Spurs front office. And he's like, you know, Victor has – Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sitting on one baseline to watch his <laughs> debut. Jerry West on the other. He's like, my summer league debut in Long Beach wasn't anything like that. Uh, and it, it was just teeming with uh, you know the glitterati of the NBA. You look one place, there's Jason Beverly Hills, the guy who makes the championship rings for everybody. Look somewhere else, you have Jeff Hamilton, the guy who makes those leather uh, gaudy jackets that, that the champions wear. Um, and then beyond that, of course, every team's front office um, and I'm not just talking about the GM. I'm talking about the GM all the way down to the last d- data guy was in the stands, um, just you know, hoping to see some history. And obviously, we know that the Victor didn't play all that well on Friday, um, but yesterday, with you know, I, I guess with some of the pressure off, uh, he was incredible. Uh, 27 points, 12 rebounds, three block shots, um, led a the comeback by the Spurs uh, late in that game hits a three pointer when they're down four with about two minutes to go to cut it to one. And the roof was ready to come off the building. And you know, Victor's going to now shut it down uh, for the remainder of the summer league. And now he has that to mull on that really strong performance uh, to give him confidence going into training camp. Yeah. People overreacted on Friday and they're probably overreacting on Sunday. Um, and I'm I'm just looking for what I think is sustainable. I, I think, it, you know, what he does on the defensive end is going to be impactful right away. Offensively, it looked like he, you know, he takes off balance jumpers. Like, he, he's still not quite sure. But defensively, I, I just think if they keep a stat for shots altered, I, I think that that would be interesting to combine. He might not get blocked shots. You know, a couple months into the season, the way he did it to start, because guys are going to be like, I know I can't go in there and do that. But that's the the feeling I get. And he seems like he's he dunks politely. He he doesn't block with, you know, this authoritative. I'm going to send it into the seventh row. Like there's I, I, he just feels like uh, calm, like he's there's a calming dominance to him, certainly on the defensive end. Well, Jerry West uh, did an interview and compared him to Bill Russell, and obviously that's you know the the, the greatest winner in, in NBA history. Um, but when you mention the fact that you don't see the ferocity on his block shots, you know Russell is a guy that that always was credited for. Why am I going to block the ball into the stands <laughs> when I can block it and corral it, get it to a teammate, and all of a sudden we're off on a fast break? And certainly he has that ability. Uh, defensively, he was exposed a little bit in the Charlotte game, the first game, in terms of getting switched out into the perimeter. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Miller kind of had his way out there, and, and that will be part of his development, the lateral quickness. And certainly uh, for him to continue to be as effective as he has been with eight blocks in these two summer league games, when it comes to the big boys, uh, he's going to have to put bulk up a bit. I'm not saying change his frame completely. You know, back in the day, Kevin Durant, people said, well, oh, you can only, you know, rep 225 pounds with the uh, uh, bench press that many times. Isn't that a problem? He, no, and clearly it hasn't been. Uh, but just the, the overall strengthening of his body will, will help him because he's going to be bounced around a lot. And I, I think at some point he's going to be targeted by some of these these veteran teams because they recognize, um, you know, whether – I don't know if jealousy is the right word, but the hype train is coming 100 miles per hour with this guy, and um, he's not quite a fully uh, formed product yet. Yeah, but I wonder, you know, who's going at him and where are they going at him? If they do switches, well, he does have that wingspan that even if you're, you know, I'm four feet away from you, I can still affect your shot. He won't have the quickness to stay with these guards. But, you know, I watched that with Joel Embiid in the NBA playoffs. He got abused by Jason Tatum on the perimeter. It happens to these guys. But 
none of those guys has the you know the wingspan that Victor Wambayama. He might get switched out, but he's gonna he's gonna affect some shots out there. And he also said, "I don't need to bulk up. Like you 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 know, are these guys gonna be able to keep up with him? Because I did notice this: if he blocks a shot or there's a rebound, he's out on the break. Like he re, he goes, he's ready to go. And I want to see if these big men are able to go when he goes as well. So he he does have strengths, but you know they all have weaknesses as well. He has those long strides, and uh, the the court awareness is already there, certainly on the defensive end, but even offensively. Now, I, I think in his debut, you saw him put the ball on the floor, maybe a little bit too much, a little bit of a loose dribble uh, on a, a few possessions, but the highlight to me in that first game was him kind of running the, the, the break uh, and showing some point guard vision with an underhanded shovel pass uh, to a teammate for a wide open um, score at the bucket when all the defensive attention was on him. And, and, you know, that is the next level of dissecting the game, um, not just going for the, the obvious play there. And then also offensively, we saw in the second game that drop step. I mean, when you talk about his length, uh, if he goes to that drop step and, you know, kind of the over the shoulder hook shot, you can't touch it. It's unguardable. Um, he continues to develop that. I mean, he's going to be lethal. Dave McMenamin covering the NBA for ESPN. If the Spurs got Scoot Henderson, Greg Popovich's future would be what? A lot of wine and <laughs> some long uh, Italian dinners. <laughs> I, I don't think he'd be signing a, a five-year extension okay. uh, to to continue to coach as he approaches 80 years old. I'll, say, I'll put it that way. And that's no knock on Scoot. That's no knock on Scoot. But the, the victor... Uh, you know, the entire Victor story, it, it feels almost predestined for him to be in an organization like the Spurs coached by a guy like Greg Popovich. What leverage do the Trailblazers have with Dame Lillard and the Miami Heat? I'm not so sure how much, you know, other than the, the fact that, you know, there is no trade clause um, that, that Dame will have to be able to block a trade should he decide he doesn't like that situation. And that would allow the Blazers, obviously, to, to find any sort of situation out there that they felt like they can get the best deal from. And ultimately, maybe that does make this a, a two or, th or three or four team trade mm -hmm. if they can get the Clippers or the Knicks or the Sixers involved with some of their assets. But, uh, I, you know, th there's the next leverage play would be, and I, I covered a similar situation like this in 2017 when Kyrie Irving asked for a trade and the Cavs didn't find a trade partner until August uh, with the Boston Celtics. And, you know, it, it, August, that's when the murmurs started coming out. Well, you know, I, I do have this bulky knee that I, I could get that knee cleaned up. And, and you know, if, if, you, if I'm still in Cleveland when training camp starts, so well, I may not be ready to be on the court because I may got to get this this mm. knee fixed. Mm. You know, that would be the play that, that Damian Lillard's camp could make. It, it would be, well, you, know, you want to keep me in Portland, uh, you're not going to see me on the court. What about James Harden? James, and I, I was speaking to a bunch of folks about this uh, Sunday evening. Uh, the signals right now is that he will be back with the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, obviously, you know, he opted in to that last year of his deal that didn't find the market he was expecting uh, with certainly with the Houston Rockets. You know, they were they had their money elsewhere in, in Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet. Uh, but as of right now, um, with you know, certainly no momentum appearing on a, a deal to the Los Angeles Clippers. And Philadelphia, obviously, still needing what he does uh, without finding a replacement for him. Uh, it, it, it looks like there's a pathway for him to come back to the Sixers next year. Yeah, I think he ran out of options. I think he played his hand and uh, felt like the Rockets, as an organization and their players, didn't want him back because that would stunt their growth. I thought Fred Van Vliet was a great signing. I don't know who they were bidding against for Dylan Brooks, but uh, they got Dylan Brooks. And uh, I think he said, I'm in everybody's head every single night or something like that. Like, uh, you might be in your own head a little too much there, Dylan Brooks. 
He knows how to play the heel, though. I, I'll give him that. Well, and I don't think he embraced it, though, Dave. When it really, <laughs> when 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 we wanted you to embrace it, like you want to be a tough guy, then, then all of a sudden he's like, I don't want to be a tough guy anymore. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be, uh, you know, the villain, Dylan. I, well, LeBron James, I guess, is not to be trifled with. Is one lesson he learned from that playoff series <laughs> against the Lakers. <laughs> But certainly, uh, you know, even though we, you know, we all were a, a little shook in the industry by seeing the report that the Grizzlies would uh, welcome him back under no circumstances whatsoever, uh, whatever he did, however he played on the court and however he marketed himself outside the court, uh, it resulted in an $86 million payday. Oh, so I know, somewhere. I know, I know. Hey, Dave, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time as always. Thanks, Dave. That's Dave McMenamin. He covers the NBA for the Mothership. 